Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Big Data MBA. In episode two, we introduced the Big Data Business Model Maturity Index, which was a guide or a benchmark that an organization could use to determine how effective they were at leveraging data and analytics to power their business models. It was a what you were possible to achieve or the realm of what was possible, leveraging best practices in big data and analytics. If the big data business model maturity index was the what you could achieve, in episode three here, I want to talk about the value engineering process, which is for how you can achieve that. Again, big data business model maturity index talks about what we can achieve. Today, we're going to talk about the value engineering process for how you achieve that. This case, the value engineering process starts with an understanding and identification of your organization's key business initiatives. Moving to the cloud, not a business initiative. Transforming or transitioning to SharePoint, not a business initiative. No, a business initiative is something that has meaningful and material business value that the organization is trying to achieve over the next 12 to 18 months. It might be to improve customer uh, uh, retention, it might be to reduce unplanned operational downtime or reduce inventory costs or increase the quality of care in a hospital or improve freshman retention at a university. And it's, these are business initiatives and these have value associated with them. And if you want to go into a value engineering process, the bottom line is you need to start where the value is created. And that value is created around a key business initiative. Now for public organizations, you can typically find these key business initiatives in annual reports, in press release, in look at the CEOs, public blogs. They will tell you what the company is trying to achieve. Start here. Again, if you want to drive value in the organization. If you want to transition from being a data centric organization to a value creation organization, you must start with where value is being created. And make sure, by the way, you thoroughly understand that business initiative. Understand the metrics and KPIs against which progress and success is going to be measured. After you've identified the key business initiative, next we want to go to the key stakeholders, the key business stakeholders, and Identify those folks, those business functions who either impact or are impacted by that business initiative. Once we identify them, and by the way, we want a diverse group. We want a group, a group that's going to, a series of groups are going to look at this business initiative from a number of different perspectives. Diversity is good here. Diversity of metrics and KPIs against which they're going to measure success are good. But what we want to then do is once you've identified those key stakeholders who either impact or are impacted by that business initiative, the key next step, the heart of the value creation process is to identify, validate, value, and prioritize the decisions the organizations are trying to meet, trying to make. All right, this is, this is the key part of how not only do you identify the use cases or the decision you're trying to go after, prioritize them, but you're also trying to drive organizational alignment around that. And I like to use a prioritization matrix here as a vehicle for doing that. Yeah, you, you bring everybody together, all the stakeholders together on a flip chart like this one right back here. You put post-it notes all over it, and then you have people debate, argue, conjole, fight about where do each of these use cases or clusters of decisions sit with respect to business value and feasibility over a 12 to 18 month time frame. By the way, that 12 to 18 month time frame is really critical. It ensures that you can deliver that meaningful value immediately or in the short term. If you don't have that 12 or 18 month constraint on there, then if you have an unlimited amount of time, you can solve almost any problem in the world. So we want to force a, a key event. We want to force an event that forces the organization to have to move quickly. We want to create a compelling event to bring these stakeholders together. And this prioritization matrix, which I'm going to talk about in a separate uh, uh, episode here, is a key tool for doing that. So I won't drain it, but just let me just say to this, not only does it help you to identify and validate and value and prioritize those, those use cases here, but more importantly, it ensures you, everybody in the organization who will be impacted by this has had a chance for their voice to be heard. So that they have a chance to contribute to this roadmap of use cases you're gonna go after. Next, what we're gonna do is once you've identified those use cases, then everything else seems to fall in place, identifying, the analytics or predictions you're trying to make. Well, now you know the use cases and you can go through a process with your key stakeholders to identify the predictions they're trying to make and how you create prescriptive analytics to help them address those predictions. 
We also then want to identify the data sources. Again, if you don't have, you don't understand what problem you're going after, then you have no idea what the data to go after. So this allows you to key focus in on what data is most important for the problem you're trying to, fall, trying to solve and for that particular use case. And finally, step six, identifying the architecture and the technology necessary to do this. What this process does, especially in steps, after you've done step three, and step three is the heart of the process. Once you've identified and prioritized those use cases or clusters of decisions, everything else falls out, right? It becomes very self-evident what predictions or analytics you're gonna need. It becomes very self-evident what data and instrumentation you're gonna need. And finally, what technologies. And what, by doing this kind of a process, it puts an end to the, this big bang approach for build, building your data and analytics architectures. We're gonna, we're gonna build a data and analytics architecture one use case at a time. We're gonna let the use case ROI drive the business engagement because if we really wanna focus on value engineering, then we need to focus in on not only what's important to the organization from a value perspective, but making sure the data and analytics we're delivering are helping to realize and manifest the value of those key business initiatives. Thanks for listening. More later.